This is a work that we actually this is it's related with Lisa as well because one of the things we would like to do with Lisa. By the way, uh, Lisa, you speak? Yes. No, no, I'm not the, the, the rules here. Can you hear them? You can hear me from me, it's okay. I, I am so used to, to bring this thing that uh, I, I don't. Okay, so th th this is work that we, uh, with Lisa, one of the things we would like to do is in the physics in the sense of understanding better what the holes are and what are the laws of gravity. And in order to do this, if you want to understand uh, whether things are different from the standard uh, paradigm, you need to have models that deviate from the standard paradigm. And this is not easy in general, but it's not easy to deviate from general relativity, or it's not easy to deviate from, from the typical black holes of general relativity in a consistent way. And we were exploring uh, these things in, in the idea with parametrizing like objects that are not the standard black holes. Or, or even in scenarios that are not a standard general relativity. Right? And, th and then this is a spin off of these things we were doing that has to do with precisely the type of black holes. Okay, what happens now? It doesn't like it now. I think this is too much time. Uh, let me see. Is there a new computer? Maybe now. Okay. And uh, okay, so the, the, the idea of the talk is first of the, a bit of interaction of about what physical processes around black holes we can study with population theory black holes. I will give you a review of, of this theory. And, and then I, I, I will tell you about how we, how we compute physical things and basically it's based on, on obtaining master functions and master equations from, from perturbation theory, uh, how it works. And then I will tell you about hidden symmetries that are there that could be very useful in the future to, to understand better uh, the physical process around black holes or even deviations from the standard paradigm that we would like to do. And we can use some, some action conclusion. So this is based on two recent papers that I did with Michele Lenzi, which is a postdoc in our institute. Um, okay, just, just the reference in case you want to look more details of it. Okay, so then, go, Let's go to physical process around black holes. So let me understand to always, I, something I like to do is that a black hole is, is an idea, it's, an, it's a concept, right? It's not like a stars, right? We are different, but something that you, we saw there in the, in the sky and then we try to make a, to build a model. This is a bit different, right? We have a theory that predicts these objects and then we try to look for them, right? Uh, so which we don't know whether, exact, whether the realization is going to be exactly like the theory is telling us or not. So this is something important to understand. And, and it was not until the 50s or 60s when people still actually started to understand the implications of the social solution that was found in 1916, so more than 100 years ago. Uh, but now they, we have observations from very different type of observatories, from BLDI, X-ray, gravitational waves, that surprisingly do not find any deviation from, 
from the standard paradigm, uh, uh, the, the black holes so the black holes of relativity are perfectly compatible with what we are seeing up, up to now, right? Okay, so just uh, to, uh, to remind you, uh, black holes are, this is a rough uh, definition, it's a vision of no, of no, no escape, uh, where, I mean, no physical signification is composed by the outside of it. So, so not, not only light, but any, any, anything can, can get outside of it. And here you have the, what is called the Penrose scatter diagram of situations. This is the eternal black hole. This is a black hole that has existed for, for uh, all, the, all the time. And this is already, which is very useful to do calculations. It's very problematic in itself, right? Because how is it possible to have an eternal black hole, right? This is how it is, right? This is the event horizon, the null infinity, where uh, null signals get, and this is a special infinity, where this is what we understand typically by infinity, right? Uh, and in the future, if you cross the horizon, you inevitably find a, a singularity. And this is the, the corresponding diagram for the formation of a black hole, right? Where you have some matter that at some point the, uh, it gets too compact, and then you have form a horizon, and from there you, you have a different formality. So this is a part of, a part of this diagram is also found here. And you all have this structure typical of, of asymptotically flat uh, space time. You have questions that uh, yes, or you can interrupt. So there is a spectrum of black holes, but the black hole spectrum. <laughs> so what black hole, what kind of black holes we have found, right? So in principle, you can think uh, 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 that the plan uh, the plan mass, we don't know anything there, right? So, but there uh, there is a territory that we don't understand, we don't know very much, but uh, Juan here is an expert. We know that here can be primary black holes formed in the, at the very early universe, or other things. We can try to, to see these things by lensing or, or other experiments, or other observations. We can give us information. And this brings us to, the, to this uh, region of three to four, four, five solar masses, where we don't know whether it's a, a gap between the masses of neutron stars, which typically the maxima is around two, and the smaller masses that we are seeing now, uh, either from X rays or radiation waves or black holes, which is around five. Right? So there is the question of is there black holes here? If there are primary black holes, maybe there, there can be some, some of them here or even lower, right? Uh, okay, so then we have what people call a stellar origin black holes, which are supposed to have black holes formed by the collapse of ordinary matter. And this has already been, in, in principle, we have evidence or certain evidence with X ray and uh, ground based uh, radiation wave detectors. Here there is an, another possibility of a gap. Because there are, there are some uh, instabilities in supernova that might prevent black holes from 60 to 120 more. This is a big uh, uh, interval, but this, this depends on the details of this instability that people don't understand too well to, to, to know. But uh, although you can form these black holes, as we have seen in LIGO, there are, uh, one of the black holes LIGO has 100 solar masses, which may have formed already by merging with other black holes. So. But not from from the, but maybe not from the collapse. So this is also something very interesting because when you have many observations, you can then try to understand the formation uh, channels of these objects. Then uh, there is a region at to ten to the five where we call these intermediate mass black holes, um, and this is something that's an, uh, again a territory that we don't know very much. We know that there are some black holes now that, that are in the, in the boundary here of around 100 solar masses. We know that there are some, some of them that are in 10 to the 5 that are in the dwarf galax galaxies, but somehow people have the feeling that they belong to the, to the other intervals that, that are on the, on the other side. And there is the possibility of having these intermediate mass black holes in global clusters, something like this, but so far there is no uh, absolute evidence of this, or at least there is no consensus that this is, has been found. And then we have supermassive black holes that go to 10 to the 5 to 10 to the 10 solar masses, where this probably MISA, Pusantene arrays can try to, to see. So you, this, is, this, is, this is a big variety of, this is the nice thing about black holes is that they, they have a huge <laughs> mass, mass range. So, so they can appear in many places and, and, and they, they, they are due to very different physics. Uh, right? So the, this is the, the biggest, sorry, the biggest. Um, The biggest uh, black hole known is sometimes 10 to the 10, so, which is already a problem to understand how it was, there was time to form from the, you believe the Big Bang theory, how, how, how there was time to, to form such a big monster. 
we have a, in principle, there is something that looks like a black hole at the center of our galaxy, right? So there is, there is another price for this, right? And, and which is 4.3 million solar masses, right? Uh, this is probably the one that we have uh, um, studied more. And just to tell you, so as the, as the mass goes down, then you have bigger curvature and in the, at the horizon. And, and also, sorry, the, the, the cosmological frequencies also decrease with mass. Okay, so processes around black holes. So there, there are two, two processes that I like to distinguish that you can study with black One is a scattering of, of a black hole. And here there are also two relevant situations. One is the, the one where you have incoming waves from space and infinity. So that you have a plane, like a plane wave that goes here. There is a pot the black hole interacts like if there was a potential barrier there, right? And then normally you have a, a, an outgoing wave and uh, some sort of spherical uh, waves, so with different harmonics go, going away, right? And then if you are here in, a, in the solution, you can try to see, for instance, this, this, this uh, this way. Uh, this, for instance, this is a way where you can also extract this the energy from the black hole by the Penrose process. There is it's similar to this black hole Schneider project, pro process, but it's not the same. So you can throw away from the way can can get out with more energy that probably is quite fast. We may not understand what you mean by black hole. Yeah, black hole Schneider, this is um, it is when you have this as a pick up in nuclei. Uh, uh, you have this uh, enormous jets of matter, and this is believed to have been produced because there is a spinning black hole in the center. So basically, this, the, the black hole drags the magnetic thin lines uh, that, that because there is a, it's an accretion disk there, and the, and the lines can cross through the ergosphere, which you can enter the ergosphere and get out of the ergosphere. But the, in the ergosphere, you are forced to, to rotate with the black hole. Therefore, the, the, the acid rotates the, the, the magnetic thin lines and becoming a, a dynamo, right? Uh, uh, and this is a, a, the engine that then we, we believe is, is behind uh, these uh, very energetic processes like the formation of jets and, and all those things. Uh, so the, the, in this way, you are also extracting energy from the atmosphere. Uh, and this is why it's similar, the similarity of extracting energy. And those things. Okay, the other, the other situation is where the, where the waves come from near the, the horizon. Like you think about the uh, Hawking radiation. And then, as, as, the, as, as the, like, when you have this quanta that are being emitted, but this quanta, in order to get to you, you are outside, they need to cross the, the they need to cross the, the potential barrier of the black hole. And some of them may do it, and some of them get reflected and get back. So this is another scattering process, but from the other side. Okay? Which, are, in principle, the physics is, is, is very different. And then the other thing that you can study with, with uh, perturbation theory of black holes is black hole, what you call black hole calcinomal oscillations. And they, this, is, this is the typical potential of a black hole. So the, the horizon is, goes, is, is towards there. You take, there is a coordinate I will explain later that brings the horizon to minus infinity. And then the uh, spatial infinity is towards there to infinity. And then you have this potential barrier. If you, if you have normal coordinates, the, 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 the horizon will be somewhere here, right? And you have this potential barrier, which typically, for uh, when you know what is composition in harmonics, the, the peak of the barrier is around 3M, is what the null ring. Right? Actually, for null particles, I think it's exactly at 3M. But this is, so you, you, study, you study like scattering of particles, you have this potential at 3M. You have a study a scattering of, of different fields, then this changes a little bit, okay? And then the quasi normal modes is, is, is defined are the modes that are purely ingoing at the horizon. So they only enter the horizon, nothing is coming. That's, but also they are uh, purely outgoing, so to infinity. So nothing is coming from infinity. It's not a, it's not, it's not a scattering process, right? Because nothing is coming from either side, right? So then the, the, the solution of this, if you do the eigenvalue problem for this problem, then the, the, the eigenfrequencies turn out to be complex numbers, right? And it's because uh, you have an, an infinite, it's like you think about an optical cavity, an optical cavity, that's a question of mode, because when you have losses of, of light, suddenly this light has access to an infinite, uh, an infinite uh, space, and then, and then there are question of mode as well. Right? Yeah, and then you have a damping of this mode. Here is the same. You have the complex number, what is telling you is that the real part are the, the frequencies of oscillation, 
but the, the, the complex part is a dumping time. So this, this oscillation is going to be dumping time because there is an infinite space for the oscillations to, to travel around. Right? Actually, this, this will be like black hole free oscillation. This is, for instance, a process that I'm going to explain to you that happens, uh, uh, that happens uh, uh, at the end of the position of the black hole. Very good this is, for instance, a typical uh, spectrum uh, in the complex plane. So this is the imaginary part of the frequency, and this is the real part of the frequency. And for different harmonics, you see where the, the discussion frequencies are located. You can compute this numerically. There are also some analytical approximations for doing this as well, um, like with WKB uh, approaches or things like this. So this is the frequency, and this is the dumping time. Okay. So we, we realize that they play a prominent role in the, in the dynamics of, 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 uh, of the response of the whole standard perturbations. So this is why they're important, is because uh, after, and in particular, for instance, when, when we know that they dominate the radiational wave emission in the aftermath of the collision of two black holes. So when those two black holes are orbiting each other, like in LIGO, like the LIGO has seen, or LIGO has seen, when they merge, uh, after a while, the, the, the emission is dominated by this cosmic amount mode until the system relaxes to the final black hole. Right? So this last part is, is, is in there. Actually, even in the case of head-on collisions, what we saw is that, is that basically all the emission is dominated by cosmic amount mode. Right? This doesn't mean that cosmic amount modes, uh, you can express the solution in terms of cosmic amount mode. This is a bit more subtle because they are not co a complete set. There is no. They are, yeah, they are perturbations. If, if, if the, if the, of course, I mean, when the, the black holes merge and you, form a, a, and you form a common horizon, at that moment, it's not a perturbative regime where you can study this as a perturbation of a single black hole. But as just a little bit later, then, then you, can, you can already, if you grab the, the mass and the spin of the final black hole, then you can really match this oscillation with the normal mass of the final black hole. Yes, yeah. okay. I, I, I will show you what, what, what do you mean. Okay, so then the, the, this is this is uh, something that uh, this is uh, one of the fields in the design of astronomy, what we call but black hole spectroscopy, which is the idea of trying to disentangle some of these question most from, from the from the signals that we are detecting in, in, in the gravitational wave because I like the one big one. So for instance, this, you, you will, this is the, the, the signal of the first detection, a simulation, of course. And this part here is, is, is the part of the, of the ring down. Yeah. This is now here the merger, and this is part of, of, of the ring down. You will see here is, is not, this is a little bit of oscillation because they are very dumb. They are dumb exponentially in time. Right? So they, they disappear quite quickly. You, see, this is, you can see this, this is the, the signal, typical signal that we can divide in this final phase that we can uh, model with Newtonian approximations. Well, well this, this is this, this, some of the sentences here are for Lisa. So, uh, just in, okay. um, so we have in Lisa, we will have a large scenario, and this, this can give you information about how we propagate, whether there, there are some, they propagate as. GR tell us, or there are some effect due to deviation from, from the general relativity, like you know, the space time has the form, the formation, so things like this, right? Uh, then there is a, a, a part here, which is then the, the merger, when this thing you need to, to use full Einstein equations, and then you need to use numerical relativity to describe this. And of course, this is a, a, a place where you can try to distinguish between general relativity and other fields because it's the one where non-linearly something that this will, will play the biggest role. And finally, this is the, the ring down. And here, basically, the, 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 the waveform is just a damp sinusoidal. Right? So, so you have these frequencies, which are the, frequ the real part. And this corresponds to the inverse of the imaginary part. Right? And, and the good thing is that if you believe in the no uh, conjecture, right, that the uh, black holes are uh, described only by two numbers, so physical black holes are by two numbers, mass and spin, these numbers here only depend on the mass and spin of the black hole, right? So if you have to, you identify two personal modes, in principle, you can determine the mass and the spin. But the third one is already a test of, a test of, of the black hole paradigm, right? Because once you know the mass of the spin, the third one is fixed. 
right? So if, if, if the value is not your value, something is, is going is going wrong, okay? So then this is this is why uh, this spectroscopy is very good for fundamental physics. And what about charge? I mean, I know it's statistically may not be very right. No, yeah. If you have charge, then you you, you will need a, a, a one more. Yeah, you will need more number, right? You are if for some reason. I mean, you are they are thinking like a microscopic black hole that they can they can retain the charge and they collide. Then you have more number. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what this kind of yeah. That's for black hole. No, but Kerr Neumann, you know, like Kerr Neumann, yeah, Kerr Neumann, you have. Uh, yeah, right. No, no, like if it's bound. Right. You, 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 this is one thing. Talking about the standard deviations, one thing you can do is, is you can do your calculation and assuming that they are charged black holes. And then you can put in, in your waveform, you can put parameterize it by the charge, and then you can write from the data, estimate the charge, and, and put bounds to the, to the charge of the black hole. No, I said, this is from Alisa document, that's why, okay. No, but, uh, no, I, I'm going to tell you now. So uh, in, in LIGO and video, now we have up to 90 events, more or less, right? Uh, uh, most of them are, are binary black holes. And we know that the, the LIGO and video have been improving the sensitivity, right? But, uh, for instance, this is a very recent uh, study of whether you can extract this, this uh, these uh, deviations in the frequency. So what they, what they did here is to inject, they, they did, uh, they did um, synthetic, so they, they invented deviations from, from, the, from the frequencies. They put it by hand, these, these, these modes, and then they tried to see whether they could distinguish between um, these deviations from, from the typical ones. And you can see here, it's, it's very modest. What, what you can achieve now. So basically you are in the, in the so what you get is, is basically the error that you have, right? So, so uh, probably EP will, will go up, but, but, but with an ELISA, this, this is, you can, this is a signal of a massive block of coalescence and you can tell, oh, but this is the simulation. No, this is not the simulation, this is the simulation, but it has the noise as well. So this is, you can see here how the, the signal to noise in Lisa will be probably between 50 and 5,000, right? You have a, a, an event with 5,000, then you can do ma ma much more things. You can really uh, have very small level bus in the This is why the same is if you do the Einstein telescope. In the telescope, we, we increase one order of magnitude, the sensitivity, and probably you start getting into the, the, the sensitivity where you can start doing, doing these things in a more, in a solid way. Right? That's what I mean. I think now, I think now it's a bit too, I mean, you probably you see millions of papers now going in the archives and uh, telling up all kinds of things, right? But, uh, but yeah, you have to be very careful because some of these papers, uh, maybe some of the results depend out of, on the priors of the data and things like this. So one has to be very, very careful with this. <laughs> because this is a very, I mean, there may, this is very delicate because of this question almost, you have three quantum numbers now, right? Not, not the LN, you have the N, LN, right? So you need to, Actually, now, now there are even some people saying that maybe unstable, the, even the fundamental mode, although we don't see this in any simulation that we do with black holes. There's something that is happening. Okay, so let me go a review of black hole computational theory. So there are different regimes where when you have a binary system, you can do perturbations. One is when they are widely separated and, uh, and then you can just put it in a theory. When they are, they are similar mass, but they are very close, then you need numerical relativity. And when they are very different in mass, or, they are, or then you can use black hole perturbation theory because the space time is dominated by one black hole and the other one is like a perturbation. And then basically what it means is that your space time metric is the metric of the black hole, care of Schwarzschild, and then you have some perturbations. That's the, the idea, okay? This is another graphic, a similar thing. So let, let, let's, let's focus on the, on the number that in case for the moment, right? Uh, well, actually for, for, the, for this talk, I'm only going to talk about the, if you want, I can tell you some things about spinning black holes, right? So you know that the background space time will be the Schwarzschild metric, where f is from minus to m, this is the uh, element of the field sphere, and then this satisfies the vacuum Einstein equation, which is what we know about Schwarzschild. Then we perturb it, and this will induce a first order, a perturbation in the Einstein tensor, right? It will be the, the this will be the density of the background, which is zero, plus some perturbation. And if you do some algebra, you can write down a first order perturbation like this. So this is the, the, the Lambertian of the background. This is why you have the hat. This is the Riemann of the background. And then you have this quantity here, 
which essentially is, is the divergence of the of the metric perturbation. So this is so you choose the Lorentz gauge where basically the divergence of the perturbation is zero. In this gauge, you have these wave equations. You have a set of wave equations for the perturbation, which are very nice. Actually, the, the, it's not the perturbation themselves, it's the trace reverse perturbation. So you take the trace with minus, minus one half of the trace of the perturbation. Okay, so now in, in for spacing, we have a spherical symmetry, we can profit this. And, and the idea of the spherical symmetry means that you can always, in a geometrical way, write the spacing symmetry like the, uh, what is called a warp product. So you have a, a, a two dimensional Lorentz manifold with a true metric, a two dimensional metric. But here you don't have a true metric. You have the metric of the sphere, but you have a this factor R2, R, R squared, that belongs to the, to the, to the Lorentz manifold. This is why it's warp, because it's warped by, by this R squared factor. Okay, but then this structure is very good to to decompose. That's the, the, the metric. In, a, in, a, in typical coordinates, this is this this what these metrics are. So then we can we can now this thanks to this we can split this this metric perturbations in a spherical harmonics, actually in a scalar vector and, and tensor harmonics. So for instance, the spherical harmonics are so you already know they satisfy this Laplace equation with these eigenvalues are L L plus one, right? This is the Typical, typical harmonics. There are many, many conventions here for the different expressions, but uh, in principle, this is what they satisfy. And then you can introduce vector harmonics in two ways. There are just taking the gradient, these are even parity. I will tell you now what is even parity, or people call it polar modes. Or if you take the, the, the volume element of the, of the exact covariant derivative from the two sphere, or you take the volume element of the sphere, by doing the dual of this, you have another vector, which is now changed parity because it's. This is not a parity invariance, okay? And similar thing with the tensor spherical harmonics. If you take the symmetric ones, you have the trace, you have one that is, uh, has even parity and is trace-free, and you have a similar one which has a parity, basically taking the vector and taking the symmetrized point relative on the two sphere, right? So th th this is all, all the possible spherical harmonics that are, are going to interest us. So you can do this in a, in a covariant way on, on the two sphere. And basically, the idea of parity transformation is you do a parity transformation, the even parity harmonics uh, pick a sign that minus one to the L, and in the odd parity to the L plus one. This is the, the distinction. And they decouple. When we put them in an equation, each harmonic decouple and each parity decouples. So you have now, a, a, from one equation, you, pa you pass to infinite equations for each harmonic and each parity. Okay, this is what I was telling you. And this is just a, how you put it. Basically, the, the odd parity only doesn't have a scalar part because this is a, will be even parity. You only have vector and tensor part. And this is the, the even parity has everything. So here you have three components of the metric perturbations and you have seven. So basically, they don't, they, they don't, they don't distribute <laughs> equally, right? They have to sum the 10 components of the metric. You have three uh, axial or odd parity and, and seven uh, even parity. Okay. So then, you put this into a equation, you do all the derivatives, and then in the end, what you need to do is to recast, to, to bring the Einstein tensor, the perturbations in the form of spherical harmonics. So you need to bring this in the form of something proportional to, to scalar spherical harmonics, to better spherical harmonics, and tensor spherical harmonics. And you do this by using all the equations that all these harmonics satisfy. And, and the coefficients are going to be quantities that will depend on time and, and, and radius. So, so basically then you have seven equations for, for polar perturbations, for the perturbations, and three equations for the perturbations. This is, you can find it this in the literature, all these equations. And you can even write them in a covariant way with respect to this two-dimensional Lorentzian manifold. Then gauge, gauge invariance. This is something that is a, a, something very problematic typically in general relativity. And it's because it is presented typically like a coordinate change. In reality, it's not a coordinate change. It's a, it counts because you need to, you need to make a, a mapping between your idealized space time and your perturbed space time. Okay? And what you, you need to identify points on one to the other. And this is one possible choice, right? This, here you have two different choices. So each choice of, of, of mapping is a gauge, right? Because there are different ways in which you can identify this. And basically, a gauge transformation is going from one of them and coming back from the other one, right? And what happens is, is that these gauge transformations uh, induces changes in the metric that you may think that they are physical and not always are physical. 
And in cosmology, I probably found more that in the 70s, many famous people did many mistakes because of, of this problem, right? So uh, what, you can, what you can always do, why is this? Because typically in order to work and in order to say that the metric, in, uh, the total metric is the metric of the background plus perturbations, you need to bring things either to one space time or to the other to compare, right? So when you bring everything to, to you, this, this transformation looks, looks like uh, a coordinate change, right? But in the idea, it's not a coordinate change, right? And, and, and if you are in, in small deviations, uh, uh, this, you need to assume that this is small. Okay, so when you do this, you see that the metric experiences because of this transformation, a transformation of this, of this, of this problem. So you have the, the new metric, is the old one, minus the covariant derivative of, of this vector field generating the transformation. Okay. And then you can compute uh, what are the changes uh, in, at, at each harmonic. So you need to decompose also the, 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 the gauge vector in, in the spherical harmonics. In the, in the eventuality, you have a, a, sca um, well, a scalar and a vector, although in, in the other one is like in the other way around, and in the, in the eventuality, you have a vector. So there are, in the end, we have three components in the eventuality and one component in the eventuality, which are four, which is the gauge coordinate transformations or gauge freedoms are typically right? And then you can see how, how the, the metric transforms. You, you can, all the components of the, of the, of the, of the harmonics trans transform. This is for the eventuality sector. This is also you can find in the literature. And this is for the eventuality sector. You can see that. But then one thing you can do is whether you can construct combinations of the metric perturbations that are invariant under, under these changes. So they, they don't change. And indeed you can do it. Um, for example, this thing uh, is, the, is, is, uh, is, is the part of the, of the, the scalar part of the, in, 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 so I guess the scalar harmonic part is HH, HHD. Is, you can start this from like this. It's a vertical direction like here, and, and our AR is the gradient of the area coordinate. And this K tilde, these are getting by um, quantities in the even part of the sector, and these are getting by quantities in the part of the sector. Okay, now, uh, in principle with this, what you are going to have is a set of Einstein equations that 10 equations, well, seven and three, in, when you have the composing harmonics, and now you need to solve them. And this is a complete, in principle, nightmare, right? Uh, but then in 1957, uh, Rigi and, uh, and Wheeler, they realized that actually you can decouple these equations in terms of a master function that satisfies a kind of a wave equation in two dimensions. So a one plus one wave equation, one time dimension and one radial direction, where, where this um, box two means the Lambertian with respect to the Lorentzian metric in, in two dimensions. This is the thing. This is a potential, and, and this is the this is the, the master function with this combination of metric perturbations. This is for the for the opality. So this is for the opality. And they choose a, a gauge, which is now called the ridiculous gauge, which, where they make these this components of the metric uh, bands. And this is, although they didn't find it in, in a gauge environment, they, they, they were very clever to find the, the gauge in which they know they were not going to be a, a artifacts due to vector. Right? You can do it in, in coordinates. The typical coordinates looks, you see, looks like a wave equation in, in one plus one. This is a wave operator. You have a potential here, yeah? this is opality, where this. R star is what we call the, the, the Tatuas coordinate. It's a, it's a coordinate change of the real coordinate that brings the horizon to minus infinity. Okay? That's what, but then in this way, you have a, a typical wave operator in, in a flat space, right? And the potential here, uh, which is the, uh, now you need to control IF, is, is this one. And this is what the, this is called the Rigi-Wheeler potential, and this is the original Rigi-Wheeler uh, master function. And what the good thing, um, well, and, and well, let, let me put you for the polar sector, we need to, we need to wait until 1974, yeah, that's Cedilli, because that you have seven metrics, this is more, much more messy. Cedilli, uh, a student of Wheeler, uh, although I think he left after what I didn't find a picture of him, <laughs> uh, work out the, the, the master equation for even perturbations. You see the potential. Uh, looks much more complicated. Although you will see later that it's not much more complicated than the other one. I will tell you what it is. Huh? Well, you have these functions here. Uh, this lambda is this. And, okay. and this is the, the master function, which uh, again is, is much more complicated than the, than the regular one. And this is also gauge invariant. In, in the regular gauge, it looks much, much more simple. 
Okay. So the, the summary is that we have a uh, master equations for, for off parity perturbations and even parity perturbations. The one for parity has the regular master function. And, and there is another one that was from later, which is by cutting and price and grid, which I will tell you is, is the 10 derivative of the previous one. And we have the, the Serili Montgomery master function, and, and they have fixed potential. So, in, independently of whether, whether you use one master function or another, the potential uh, is the same. Okay? So, the important facts the, the master functions are mixed invariant, and we can compute all the, all the physical quantities associated with this uh, perturbation of physical processes in terms of this, this master function. You only need to, to solve for the master function. So here you, you can compute the fluxes in gravitational waves, the angular moment fluxes in gravitational waves, the moment fluxes in gravitational waves, all of this, you can compute only in terms of this master function. So this is a big simplification with respect to the idea of solving a couple system of seven equations or three equations for each harmonic, right? But in certain cases, like in the regular gates, uh, you can recover all the metric perturbations. Once you have the master function, you can recover all the metric perturbations. This is necessary when you find that we do this self host problem in, in steam and resin fire. There, there are quantities that are not getting by, like the surface, and then we need to recover the metric perturbations from the okay. And this, in principle, I, I, I have explained this for vacuum, but it can be a, a, also applied to perturbations that are generated by, by matter perturbations. Okay? It's not only for vacuum space time. Okay, so one of the questions that we that we were asked, because we were doing these things in, in, in a scenario that was not really the, the typical one, and then we have additional terms, and we didn't know how to decouple the equations because uh, when you have extra terms in your equations, you can try to do the same tricks as they did, but they don't work. <laughs> you have to do like some other combinations. Right? So we were asking ourselves, well, then how, how we can do this in a systematic way, right? Uh, so basically, we, we uh, try to answer this question by, by first of all, doing the uh, First of all, we need to fix the gates. We were working on completely general gates. And then uh, we assume that the, the master function is linear in the metric perturbations and in first order derivatives, which is what happens with all of the ones I, I showed you before. There are some exceptions in, in when you do this Tchaikovsky or curvature based uh, description. But in this description, basically, this is a very general um, assumption. We assume that the, the coefficients of the master in of the metric perturbation in the master function are only dependent on, on the radius. Can, can I ask why why that assumption? Like the, just one derivative of the metric? Uh, because the, 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 the other fun, the, the master functions that we knew are, are constructed basically just from, from the metric perturbations and first derivatives. But like uh -huh. but is that but it's not I would say it's not very trivial, no? Like uh, like for instance the cost value you were mentioned before is trivial precisely because Yeah, but but, but yeah, but then oh, okay, then I'll tell you this. This is a good question. I mean it, it just that the the, the, the cost function is not a metric perturbation. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay because you start from a perturbation, you can say, okay, why don't you put second order second order derivative? Because in principle, second order derivatives in principle are determined by Einstein equations. Okay. But, but we, can, we, we, can, we could do this exercise, and actually, this is, we, we plan to do it, but we don't plan to, do it to recover this master function. But, but in the course, what happens is that the, the, the tricks of, of, of uh, the U and 3 didn't work. And, and using the Neumann Penal formalism, uh, which Tukoski uh, realized that if you take one of the bi tensor scalars, that uh, satisfies a sort of wave equation as well, and this is how things everything works. But then the, the, the decomposition in harmonics is, doesn't have anything to do with that one, right? So that, that's a, because then there is a, a version for Sosie, which is the Barbin press equation or, or Nakamura Barbin press. Uh, that is, is something similar, but, uh, yes. but, but yes, I mean, this is, 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 is a very valid question. That, that's to explain to you where this comes from. So then, given that the, the coefficients the, of the metric perturbations there doesn't, will come from the, from the background, and the background is stationary, it's logical. To assume that the coefficients only depend on the on the on the on the radius, and finally we are going to impose that the, the master function has to satisfy a, a similar wave equation, okay, without imposing any 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 potential. The potential is left free, okay. So, for example, in in the parity case, the most general master function, given that you have three metric perturbations, is this one. In, in from metric perturbations, uh, this is prime is radial derivative and dot is uh, ten derivative. So this is a, then you have this answer, okay? Uh, and in the case of the empire, you have seven, you see it's, it's a bit more uh, uh, heavy. But 
then what we do, what we are going to do is to put um, distance at, into the distance at here, and you force that, that this is, is working. And then what happens when you put this, you're going to have third derivatives, single derivatives yeah, in, in, the, in, the, in the expression that we're going to have, but then you can eliminate some of the second and third derivatives from Einstein equations. Actually, you do it in a systematic way, you always eliminate the first ones. Then what you do is then impose that the coefficients or the things that didn't vanish, vanish. And that will give you the, the coefficients that you have. Okay. So we did that, and, and what we found, this is the first paper that we have, we found two branches of solution. The first one, we, we call it the standard branch, and the other one, we call it the double branch, and I will tell you later why. What is the standard branch? The standard branch, we found that the most general, most general op parity master function was a linear combination of the Rigi Weller and the Cunningham Prince Monkey. So there are no, nothing else. Okay. But the, in the even parity, we found that this is the 3D monkey and another one that is uh, new. No, actually, this is the expression of this one, in a, a covalent expression for it. And it, it turns out that, that the, I don't know which one. One of them is the, 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 the time derivative of the other one using Einstein equations, okay? Which is the same that happens here. So this one, this one was, was missing in the literature. So basically in this systematic analysis, we, we, found, we found it. And then here, the, the potentials are the, the non-potentials, are the rigid wheeler and the thing. That's all. So basically in, in, in this branch, the only thing new that we found was this, this uh, even parity master function. Actually, you can even rewrite some of the, of the fluxes in terms of this master function if you want. Okay, ah, yes, this is this one. Is the time derivative of the Fermi Moncrete is the new one, basically. Like the time derivative of the Cunningham Price Moncrete is the really good one. What is the Kilde again? Uh, K tilde is the gauge invariant metric perturbation that, do you remember when we said which gauge invariant you, you can write? Mm -hmm. Is the K tilde is the. Okay, is the one that you give me. These are getting invariant, therefore, this is really getting invariant. Mm -hmm. All of them are getting invariant. Okay. And then the double, the double branch. In the double branch, we found the, it's a completely new branch. Nothing was known about this branch, as far as I know. And here, the off parity function is a, com a linear combination of two things. One is in the off parity is the Kaiga Price Moncrief, and then you have here this thing, this thing here. There is Kaiga Price Moncrief. This is something that is not, it's, it's getting by, but it's not a master function, but this combination it is. And this, this uh, thing here, this uh, sigma odd or even, are integrals that contain the potential. And the potential in principle, I will tell you, the potential is not the, the regular potential, or, the, or, the, or no, it's not the regular potential in principle, okay? So these are the potentials. So basically you have these families of, of, of master functions and potential, okay? And what we found is that the potential, satisfies a, a, a second order differential equation where this delta V means that the, you have this potential minus the, the, the non-potentials, okay? So this is, so in principle, there is a, a infinite family of potentials that you can have here in, in, in this branch. Okay, so, we, so at the end, we, 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 we found out, we, we, there is something wrong. We, we need, it can only be the standard branch. We have to eliminate this other as well. And there was no way to eliminate this branch. So this branch is, 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 is okay. So then we, we, we saw, okay, what happens here? What, what is the what is scenario is this? And then there are some beautiful things that maybe, uh, uh, maybe a posterior may look like logical, but at that time uh, when we were doing it, we didn't, look, we didn't know that that were like this. So let's consider the space of all possible master functions and master equations, okay? You have this, this master equation with, with basically master equations are determined by the potentials, right? So this is what we have in the standard branch and this is what we have in, in the double branch. This is the two things, okay? So then the, the thing that is going to join this is what is called the double transformation. What is a double transformation? So I, I, I am applying here to wave equations, although this, the double transformation uh, appear more in the context of time independent equations, like the Schrodinger equations, okay? So you have a wave equation, if you go to the, to the Fourier domain, you, you basically get a Schrodinger equation. Uh, but, but we can apply it here too. So you have a, a, a wave equation that has a potential and, and the field, okay? And then you want to transform to another one that has a different potential and a different, and a different field. So they are directed by a double transformation if the, the field is the previous, the gradient of the previous field times a function 
the previous field. And the potential is the, is the, is the ideal potential plus times the, the gradient of, of, of this, this function. This function is what we call the, the what generates the, is the double generating transformation. So the double transformation generating function. And it has to satisfy uh, this Riccati equation for consistency, you know, you know that, 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 that you pass from this to this. Okay, so you can, you can pass to this, from this to this one with an arbitrary G, it's not possible. So if you have a, if you do this transformation with a G that's satisfying this, this is a constant, then you pass from this to this, okay? Uh, okay, so then we have this. We have a standard branch of parity modes, a standard branch even parity, double branch of parity, double branch, uh, sorry, this should be even parity. This is a typical thing of cut and paste. Uh, then the, the standard uh, branch, the, the generating transformation basically is the integral of the difference between the two potentials. The, the, the x is the total plus coordinate, okay? Actually, this is something that already is the second year. The, the only thing is that we didn't, at that time, until very recently, we didn't knew that this was a double transformation. So, Naseka uh, realized that the, that the Cosmo modes of the old parity and even parity are the same spectrum. So, old parity modes and even parity modes have the same spectrum of Cosmo modes. And this is something that Naseka realized, and he found a transformation, but the only thing is he didn't know that there was a other thing. And then, uh, then we have uh, also a uh, um, a transform, a, the double transform that transforms the standard branch in the parity with the double branch in the parity, and same with the even parity. And this, and this is the 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 double the generating function of the double transformation in those cases. So basically, all the all, all the equations at the end, one way or another, are connected by the by double transformation. So the, so this and this is the kind of the hidden symmetry that is inside of this, because it, it, this is. In order, maybe I explain in a, in a number of times, but this is what it reflects when you think about uh, in particle physics, when people were doing scattering experiments, the idea was, oh, can, can we reconstruct the, the potential from the scattering data? And the answer is no, because the, the potential is not, the, you need to, to describe something else. I mean, there was the X matrix approach, there was the, what, what is called the, the scattering data, which is the potential plus either the, the discrete states or the, in case you have a continuous spectrum, the, the the, how it's called, the, the, the reflection coefficient, for instance, thing like this, right? So the potential itself is not enough. And this is reflect that the potential is not something that you can change, maintaining the physics of, of, of the problem in reality, right? As it happens between, between parity and even parity modes. That's a bit what is reflecting here, okay? So let's look in, in, in the frequency domain picture. So you have the, the typical wave equation, and now we just introduce a, a given Fourier mode with a frequency omega. So now this becomes, uh, this wave equation becomes this kind of a Zoninger equation, right? This is a Zoninger operator. And if you, let's assume that we have, a, that we find a, an eigenfunction with a given eigenvalue omega, okay? You have an eigenfunction. Then if you build this function, the minus, the gradient of minus the logarithm of this eigenfunction, then it turns out that this automatically satisfies the double transformation consistency condition. So, so this already generates uh, other double transformation. So this is already, there was not in the literature of the Schrodinger problem, equation problems, but not in, in, this, in this one here. Right? Um, and basically it means that actually it transforms from one to the other, preserving the, the, the eigenvalue. Right? This is why it, it was, this is what, that, that's what Senaseka realizes, is that he can transform from the master equation of, of, of axial mode or, or, or parity, to the master equation of, of, of even parity mode, preserving the, the eigenvalue. Therefore, it means that you're preserving the spectrum. Therefore, the spectrum has to be the same in, in, the, two, in the two sectors. That was the, the, the way to, actually, you see when people show, you why are they say, oh, this is the spectrum of Cosmo mode. Basically, I show you that they take the, the simplest potential in terms of numerics, like the Rigi Wheeler, and this is what they are showing you. They're not showing you the one of the severely potential. Although if you do it, some people have done it, a few people have done it, then you will see it's the same spectrum. Okay? Uh, okay, actually, you, you can construct in, in the case of uh, between the, the standard branch, there is even an analytical solution. So, there is this is an analytical solution. Uh, as of how much in a second, <laughs> yeah, it's a second, uh, he did out, out of work on, on, on perturbation theory of black holes. 
Uh, and this is the, the Darwin generating function. So you, you can look at this paper of in a second, you can see that this is a, and then actually this already, this, this, this transforms from one side to the other by using the double transformation. This is very simple. Algebra. So this is a, it's very amazing. Um, actually, what you can see is that the, you can write the, the potentials. This is what I told you before. They look at very different potentials, right? One looks much more complicated than the other, but in the end, there is only a, a, a sign in this gradient that changes between the two. Okay, so you, given this, this G, I showed you before, well, alpha is this constant, it's a constant, depends only on, on the quantum number L, right? And, and this is a reminiscence of what is possible in super, symmetric quantum mechanics, right? Where you have a, a the quantum description of system with double degeneracy of, of energy levels, because this is what you have there, is that you have like two Hamiltonians, right? And, and both of them come from a superpotential. Although in that case, um, you don't have the linear term, but the linear term can be reabsorbed in the, in the, in the eigenvalue. So in the end, it's, it's kind of the same, the same idea. Okay, so then the, basically what means that the double degenerative function plays the role of the sub C quantum mechanism of potential. Basically. So this is a super potential. Okay. Okay, now the, the, there's, let's continue looking now. Uh, 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 so, we realize that this implies the, the, that the cosmonomal spectrum is going to be invariant and this double transformation. So all of them, all the branches are going to have the same, the same potential. By the way, one, one is time, time minutes. Okay. So this is a, 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 a now a scattering experiment. You have something incident, transmitted and reflected, okay? And then, and then <laughs> we have the connection with a, a court TV degree equation. This is an equation yeah, that uh, was in the solitons. They have one. That's going to be the same thing. And they interact strongly with all the solitons, but then after the interaction, they, they, they look like they were before the interaction. Yeah, so, when I was in numerics, I did yeah, the question. But then it's a bit of an <laughs> they can derive in three dynamics from the other equations, plus the first equation, and assuming solar water. Oh, okay. I think that it works in some sense with the solar water, but, and the, and, and the root represents the, the super elevation. Yeah. You think about it, it's like the potential. Yeah, the okay. 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 But then the color equation, oh, the that's gonna break. <laughs> Especially in plasma physics, I think this is where it was a revival of people in plasma physics in Jameson. Okay. So then let's consider that we, we have our Schrodinger equation and we do a deformation with a certain parameter tau. We are tau dependent into the wave function, the potential, and the and the eigenvalue. Okay. And then let's assume that the master function evolves, uh, evolves in, in that way, in this way. And why is this? Because we have in this way we have a, a lax pair of operators. You, for some things you, you, you don't need to, to assume this. It's, it's just to, to make it more simple. And then basically lax pair is a pair of operators where you have a kind of a Hamiltonian evolution of, of, of the operator or the or the or the Schrodinger operator. This brings you the KDB plus times the identity. Okay, and this is the, 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 the corresponding operator. So if you do if you do this in, in our case, the consistency relation tells you that if the if our potential if our KDB deformed potential in our master equation follows the KDB equation, then the, it has to preserve the, the spectrum. Okay. Uh, so it means that the, that the, the, the spectrum is also preserved by the, by the KDB flows apart from the double transformation. So this is something that now we have like to write. And this argument can be applied to, to, to. Then LAX, by doing this, showed that the KDB equation has an infinite set of, of integrals. Actually, this is why, because Gardner, uh, this is part, part of, the, of the principle, I think, show that the, the, the Kadar equation has infinite uh, uh, first integrals. So it's a complete integrable PD, partial differential equation. So it's, it's an amazing equation, right? And actually, uh, Fajarov and Fadayev show that this hierarchy of, of Kadar equations associated with, 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 this, with these symmetries, the infinite symmetries. You have a complete integral homogeneous system that admits canonical action angle variables that we can, you can construct from the scattering data with all the equations. So this is a, 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 a very nice idea. Okay. So now if we consider this, the, the typical thing of a scattering, 
this is the volume of, of coefficients from which you can comp compute the reflection and, and transmission. Then you realize that the, the, the flow, the, the, one of the volume of coefficients is, is preserved. And because I don't have too much time, this is a conservation law that when you write the wave function near infinity in, in this way, you have an expression for A that is a, and then you, you show that you can expand this in the, in the long frequency limit. As, as a series with coefficients. And these coefficients, because of the, um, of the, of the conservation of these volume coefficients, are, uh, give you integrals that, that are preserved. And this is what I, I call the Calderi integrals. So you, these Calderi integrals um, so become, you can find it through a recursion formula that you can find. Uh, uh, you can look at this whole paper. The important thing is that even integrals vanish because they can be written, a, 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 the real part can be written as a complete gradient, and when you integral of, of a gradient, then it vanishes, okay? And, and the other integrals, when you are, uh, look at, at, at this, you can find a, what you can realize is that uh, this integral here, because of the structure of, of the position that we have seen, because of the, of the auto formation, always gives you this. So the, the part of the sign is what they, what they differ, the, the, the vehicular potential and, and the potential, they differ in the gradient, but the gradient with integration with, and with the k power disappears. So it's always the same. And you can prove that also the same happens with the, with the double branch of, of potential, okay? So basically what, what happens is that you have uh, in the end, um, well, this is the, this is the, 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 the for here you, you can get the reconstruction of the integral, but you, in the end what you have is a number of infinite, integrals eh, that are constructed from po polynomials in the, in the potential only depending on the potential and derivatives of the potential uh, that characterize the, the, whole, the whole potential. And, and this, is, this is invariant and all these double transformations that, that, that we have found. So it's for all, if, in the same way that Casino almost are the same for all of them, for all the master equations, all, the, all, all these kind of the integrals are also the same for all the master equations. Basically, this is what, what we found. And, okay, and that gets to finish, uh, well, I think that, we have now this picture of the, of, the, of, the, of the whole space of master functions and master equations. Uh, we found that they are connected by a finite symmetry, which is this double transformation. So we call it double covariance. Um, right, it preserves the, the spectral equation mode, but also uh, for, for, for the, the case of scattering processes, it preserves also the, all the kind of interest associated with, with the running bear uh, process. So what we are now working now on is that we have realized that with this uh, kind of interest and all this, we can have uh, compute things like the gray body factors or, or the black hole, or even the question mode in a much more simple uh, way, uh, so connected to this interest as some, some invariant things. So this is some, some of the things that we are continuing working. And, and that could be a characterization of, 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 of this because it, one thing that we have seen is that in some uh, other theories, these symmetries are, uh, do not appear. So it's something characteristic of, of, of general relativity. Well, I think I'm going to stop here because it's probably too much material. Thank you, Carlos. In care. Yeah, for the whole, it's a bit more complicated because. So I, I, I'm pretty sure that something similar can be done because in the end, when you have the cost equation, uh, when we solve it in the in the frequency domain as well, you, you have you have similar kind of running the equations. So the only thing is you have two now. You have the one for the um, radial sector. And you have one for the, I think it's the polar sector, I think it's this. Because you have this, the, in the, um, there are some coordinates in which you can separate completely, the same way you can so separate the, the geodesics of care, you can also separate the Kirchhoff equation completely. So uh, uh, for each coordinate. And in principle, the, the, these are similar as the equations as the one that you obtain here from the master function. So somehow you, you can do, you can try to do the same trick there. The only thing is that you have to use the operation. And I don't know how, how this is going to be. Because I, this sum, this charge is not symmetric. It's not, this charge is always good. It's good if you 
in by the well, I, I said in, in, in by the sector, yes. Right. But but this is because the by because even it, so this is something that comes from the from the historical symmetry. It's like when you realize that the the, the pie is of the, the couple, independently that, that you don't you don't do it. So when you put uh, everything as an equation, in the same way that uh, ln is orthogonal with ln plus one, mm -hmm. so different parties are uh, uh, they, they they go they go independently. They, they don't couple. Though, let's say so. Parties are couple. Yeah, in the case of in the case of of, of, of uh, Telkowski, this is completely different, and, and probably this is what is reflected in the case that you have two sectors. You have the, the, and this also happens in, if you think about multiple moments. Fossil only has one, has mass multiple moments, right? Fossil only has one multiple moment. While in Kerr, there are like current multiple moments and mass multiple moments. So maybe the, the now we are going to have two sectors. And uh, uh, we haven't think too much, but but uh, that's uh, something important to think about in the third case, I guess. So actually, related to this, uh, you mentioned that so this new app is actually very reminiscent of uh, what is known as the Tilkowski Karolinski identity. Uh, like you have two sets of variables, right? Mm -hmm. And you have a differential map between one and the other, mm -hmm. and a consistency relation that I don't know, I'm guessing it, yeah, but you get by assuming that the inverse, like that, that they correspond, no? Like the, well, anyway. No, the, 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 the consistency is that if you want to, yeah, the, the thing is, okay. Well, yeah, yeah. So, in Kerr, actually, so mm -hmm. being more general, like you can relate the psi zero variable of the Tukowski and the psi four variable of the Tukowski. Mm -hmm. They are related by what are known as the Tukowski yes. variable. Yes. So, I was expecting, and I was actually wondering, wanted to ask you whether you have tried to relate this map between your two sets of variables and this Tukowski variable identity. Like, do they actually come from those? You know, I think it's something interesting to look at because if it works, then you know how to do it for care. That's the idea. Yeah, that, 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 that could be a possibility. I mean, the other thing is that if I am, um, I mean, some people that, that, that was, was trying to identify this type of transformation in the case of the standard lines, they realize, I mean, they try to do it then for the Bardeen press equation, which is kind of the, uh, and then that doesn't work, the double transformation. So you need, you need what, something that is called the, the generalized double transformation. Yeah, so I mean, I, this may be related. It's going to change, but I mean, right. just to check that whether this is the right yeah. intuition, my question was can you relate your Tarbut transformation to the Golkis Karolinski identity applied to Tarbut? No, it, 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 it's a good question. Uh, because, uh, like, uh, this, just because this may shift from light on. Yeah, 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 probably. No, that, that, that's something that we have in mind, but yeah, just one comment about this consistent condition. This consistent condition is because uh, we tried to, we did it in the meta domain thing. But, as once you have uh, a, 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 a this this uh, exact exact solution that I showed you that from the second form, once you have a, an exact solution of the zoning the 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 consistent condition is automatically satisfied. It's just because we didn't uh, we didn't prescribe what was the, yeah. the transformation. Yeah. And and actually the other question I had is uh, have you studied like uh, your variables in the static case? Like uh, have you studied the static case in particular? Like and having log numbers in mind. Like uh, so. The point mm -hmm. is, like people say, yeah, log numbers before we vanish. This is can be said as like kind of ambiguous. But what is not ambiguous is that there is some master variable that, in terms of the inverse radius, um, uh, the solution in terms of that variable is an exact purely drawing polynomial, right? Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, have you looked at your equations in the static room and identified which is the variable that satisfies the claim? So that, that's the question. No, uh, uh, but this is a very good question. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, will, I have in mind the, the, the numbers. The only thing is that I, I thought, okay, uh, maybe at, at the moment, because the yeah, numbers are zero, okay. they are not going to be a relation with the numbers. But, but, but uh, yes, I wanted, actually, the, 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 there have been some other papers of people looking for a synthetic symmetry, similar, similar, but the, and I tried to, we have to, like, to look at this. But as far as, as we have seen, the symmetries are not the same. I mean, some of the symmetries are asymptotic has been, up, has been later applied to long numbers. So I, I am not sure whether there is going to be a connection, but but yes, this is something that uh, I, I am, yeah, we are, we are thinking about whether this could be a... Uh, so we, we are, we are, our, our priority now is trying to understand what information, because in the end, these category variables are integrals that only depend on the potential. So they basically, they, they, it's, the only, it's the only ingredient. 
you have a, a infinite chains of, of five integrals that come from symmetries that only depend on the potential of the perturbations. So uh, at the moment, what we, what we are looking, I mean, we also have all this, just to tell you that we have these questions in mind, but the thing is that in the end, you need to give some priority. What we are trying to understand is, uh, okay, let's look at, at the physical processes like scattering and, and quasi-normal modes and see uh, how they are connected with the information of them, because uh, then you have something that is really invariant and, and you can call it. Um, but, the, but for this, I, I mean, in, in the scenario, you, you're going to have some personal modes. So uh, as long as we don't connect, the, the, because the, the, with, the, with the scattering problem models, we have already solved it. We have some how the connection, and although it involves a bit of mathematics, so, but with the personal modes, it's a little more complicated because uh, maybe I didn't, I didn't have to say, but personal modes are not bound states. Well, at least in, in, in this slicing of time radius, they are not one state, they are not complete states. So you cannot, you cannot expand your solution. In, so, so so they are, what they are called, they are uh, scattering resonances. So they are poles of the green function in the complex plane. So this is a, and, and there is a, there is a different complexity mathematics of, I realized that there is a community of people lo uh, looking for these things. Uh, and it's much more complicated to, to, so, in the case of scattering, you have a strongly built problem. In the case of scattering problem, where you have uh, incoming radiation reflected and, and transmitted, this is a, a well post strongly built. Therefore, you can apply the strongly built problem. You have a, 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 a discrete spectrum, a continuous spectrum. Uh, you have the, the discrete spectrum is, com is, is, is complete. Here we don't have, by the way, here in the black hole, you don't have a continuous uh, discrete spectrum because the potential is completely positive. So you only have continuous spectrum, you only have scattering states. But still, you can apply all, the, all, the, all, the, all these theorems and all that. But in the case of personal modes, it's much more delicate. Actually, now there, there are some people, I don't know if you have seen, there are some papers about uh, people that have committed something called the pseudo spectrum. The pseudo spectrum is complete when you do a slightly small perturbations to the potential, arbitrary perturbations in principle. And then you compute the, the personal mode spectrum. And then it turns out that uh, all the, in some papers that have here, uh, you can do really tiny, but tiny, like 10 to the minus 12 or 10 to the minus 20 perturbations to it. And then the, this, this picture I showed you before of the points of the cosmic mode, this, this graphic, it changes completely. Uh, initially, they, they, they realized that uh, perhaps the fundamental mode stays there, that is, is stable, but, the, but the, there are many modes that change completely. But then when you reconstruct the signal, <laughs> the signal looks the same. <laughs> because it's like, it, it's like this instability, it just has shifted completely the modes in a way that you, that, that you don't change the signal. So, and then it has been, a, now it's a bit of debate in the, in the, in the in between different groups. trying to understand whether uh, we can, uh, people do not make a say, look, I do a simulation and I take always the, the same things. <laughs> I identify this for the normal modes, right? Uh, but there is a bit of worry that uh, to, uh, to what extent all this all this spectroscopy is well posed or, or, or not. If you start trying to, uh, to extract other modes, right? This is interesting that the question we have. Mm. This, uh, this graph is always equal. There is a modification of the potential. Right. From the mm. Therefore, you know, not only have your positive modes, then you have repetition. Sometime afterwards of this, Again. So, would you see that there would be some kind of math equation where you see that those hidden symmetries are no longer satisfied, or yeah, what do you expect? Is it, is it well, the, if, if I have a, if, yeah, the thing is how they introduce these uh, modifications for the vector, right? If you don't modify the potential, in principle, all of this what they have done only depends on the potential. So, in principle, the KDV. Well, they have the effective you, and therefore some of them right. are going to. Right. Of, of, of these KDV so, are going to be different, for instance. Right? So these kind of are kind of are telling you information about the potential because they are polynomial, differential polynomials. So they depend on the potential and derivatives. So the, the faster you go, 
I got the derivative of the polynomial. So they are, it's like all the shape of the polynomial is centering, but in a, in, a, in a particular way. So it's not that the, the potential itself is not physically meaningful, right? Let's say in this experiment, but all this, all this, all this interest uh, seems to be. It's not because it has to do with observations. What do you expect we could uh, measure with gravitational waves that we test? No, what, 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 what we were thinking is, is to try to connect this with the Cosmo mode, see whether the Cosmo Cosmo mode can be written in terms of this interest or things similar to this. And then you can have a, like a parameter system of the Cosmo mode. Therefore, it kind of if you change, and then we, we can study um, how changing the, the spectrum of the Cosmo mode, you change this interest, and whether this is something that we can implement. And then you, you go to some other model how they will change depending on this. So like having a handle to parameterize the change. Right? Yeah. Some observations of the spectrum to the something like that. But then but yeah for this we need to have a very good uh measure yeah. measures of the frequency, right? Yeah for the moment we don't have this right. No for the moment I, I you have seen this paper is 2021 and and this is quite good. And it's already you're injecting something and you start the something you inject with the same thing you inject. So this is a very simple. Lisa or Yeah, Lisa and the telescope probably are, if they work as suspected, uh, <laughs> the, the only things are. Uh, okay. Okay. Lisa. No, Lisa was, was something that we did in, in, in a moment of desperation. Okay. Actually, Elisa, Elisa never was, uh, never was. Uh, Never was official because when there was this competition in, in, in the European Space Agency, right, for for missions, and there, so uh, Lisa is a is a L class mission, so large class missions. So that, at the moment there are three. There was this huge one that it goes goes to super Jupiter, something like this. It's going to be launched soon, although it has have to be launched in the in the 2018. You were asking me yeah, yeah. 2018, juice 2018. We are 2022. Okay, then it's Athena. That was supposed to be launched in 2028, eh? 2022, and they haven't not yet adopted the mission. Okay? So, and then there is Lisa, which is the, the first class mission. So, but in the A1 competition, uh, it was when NASA said that they couldn't, couldn't continue the collaboration because of uh, the budget, because James Webb Telescope was eating out the budget. And, uh, and then they said, okay, if you want to wait for us, uh, then we can continue the collaboration. But then Lisa said, no, we don't want to wait, we just do it ourselves. And, and then they said, okay, L1 mission, uh, budget one, 1 billion, but this time was already almost two, right? So we need to, to propose something, this is what I say, desperation, we need to propose something to fit in that, right? So we took arms out, uh, we raised the arms, and, but then the, the uh, ESA refused to call it this, and then they call it NGA, because new gravitational observatory. But then we, we call it ourselves ELISA, like, uh, I don't know, evolved Lisa, I think it was. I don't remember what it was. Yeah, it was Lisa. But then it was never official. But the picture is mm. of the short lived function. Mm. The picture has a Lisa? I, I tried to remove everything about the Lisa. No, no, because the picture is later than the Lisa. Right, right, right. No, no, no. The, 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 the... This one is Lisa. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, actually, the, 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 the current LISA is not anymore the, the classical LISA. That we get. So classical LISA is with 5 million kilometers, and the current LISA is with two and a half. Yeah. The, the difference with the LISA is that the LISA, we, we, there, was no, uh, one, there was one arm missing. So there were three spacecraft, but only two. There was actually with, there was some, one spacecraft called mother and two called children. So the mother talked to the children, but the children didn't talk uh, within the, the space. So that, that, that was a suicide, actually, basically. But yeah, I mean, we, it was, we, need, we, need, we needed to try to, to preserve the idea alive of Lisa. <laughs> we proposed something that fitted in that, in that one billion thing. And that, that, and that something was a Lisa. And now, yeah, people ask me many times, but what is a Lisa? <laughs> Got lost in the world. Hmm. Any more questions? Okay, thanks, that was the day. Thank you. Thank you.